Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I wanna show you how I edit videos in Adobe Premiere Pro. This is a video that a lot of people have been requesting for quite some time now, and I figured I'm actually just gonna make this whole video. I'll show you like real time how I edit a video. I'll have an actual video that I'm editing, and I'll show you guys the hotkeys I use, the settings I use, how I save things, how I organize everything, and overall just the general flow of how I edit a video so that hopefully you can learn from this and it'll make your editing more efficient, or maybe it'll just show you how to edit in the first place if you're brand new to Premiere Pro. So starting off right off the bat, there are a lot of different ways you can edit videos. Premiere Pro is definitely not the only one. It's the one that I prefer for a couple reasons, and I'll get into those, but there are a whole lot of free ones out there. Some of the free ones don't, they're a little bit limited sometimes, but there are quite a few that work really well. And I actually made an entire video comparing, I think three to three or five different free ones that I've used in the past that work when you're starting off. Now, once your channel gets big enough, you might wanna consider buying one. So either like Final Cut or Adobe Premiere Pro, Final Cut, the reason I don't use that one is because I don't have uh, an Apple laptop. I don't have a MacBook. So what I use on Windows is Adobe Premiere Pro. Now, I will say if you have a MacBook, you may wanna actually consider looking into Final Cut because it actually does render a lot faster. But other than that, there are definitely some benefits to using Adobe Premiere Pro. For me, like I said, the main reason is obviously because I'm using a Windows laptop. Now, with that in mind, let's jump over to my laptop and I'm going to edit a video and show you guys exactly what I do um, and when I'm editing a video, why I do what I do. So let's go over right now. Okay, so when I'm editing, typically I will go and start off with a new project, name the project something, I'm just going to call this one edit, and then I go in and find the folder where all of my content is stored. So we'll do that and I leave all these settings pretty much the same when I just start and we'll create a timeline once we have this up and running. And so once this is up, then I'll go over to assembly. And the first thing I wanna do is kind of organize my bins. So we'll go and make a bin for, I'll call this one imports, just like some kind of lower thirds and stuff like that. I'll make a bin for B-roll, B-roll. And then the rest I'll just kind of have right here. So I hit control I and it pops up the window when I wanna import things and find the folder with all of my content in it. And so starting off, just the audio track and the video are the first two things I really want here. And those two, I'll just import them. Now I do record my audio and my video separately. I know some people use like a shotgun mic or they record it together, but because I do it separately, something that I recommend is, um, so let's just go and copy, drag this down here. So you drag it down into your timeline sequence um, and then we'll go and drag the audio clip down to the bottom half there. But what I was gonna say is what I recommend since they're separate, is I actually clap like early on. So you have a little spike in the audio right there. You can see down at the bottom um, and it's generating the peak file right now. So once, there we go. So you'll see right, right around here, it should be pretty easy to line it up. If we go down, we'll see the clap and we can kind of slide this over until these peaks. So if you can see the peak right there, Move the mouse, the peak right there and the peak right there. We want them to line up as close as possible. So we're zoomed into like the single frame offset here. So, okay, so now let's test it out, see how that sounds. Okay, so it sounds like the clap was pretty much lined up pretty well there. So the next thing you want to do is click the little lock icon right here and see if we can see that. Can you even see that on the camera? Yeah, so if you click the lock icon right there, then it'll lock the video portion of it. Press the letter V so you're selecting right here and select the audio portion of the video. So because Canon cameras record the video with the audio, it's grouped together as one thing. So we will delete the audio so we don't have that weird echo in the video. Now we only have the audio track and the video track um, and they're the ones that we actually want. So then I hit C and that brings me to the little cut tool right here so I can cut things up pretty well. And if you hit control, you hold control down and you click right there, it should, or sorry, you hold shift and you click right there, it'll cut both the audio and the video at the same spot. So then press V and what I'm going to do is click and highlight a little square and just delete these old clips. So if we zoom out, the bottom bar right here is essentially your slider. You can look through the timeline with this, slide back and forth. You can also zoom in and out by clicking and dragging this. So if we zoom in, you'll see right there, there's an empty gap before the beginning of this video. So the next thing I wanna do is click in that space right there, highlight it white and just hit delete. 
And so that'll take me to, if I press home, it'll take me to the beginning of this video. So then when you find the spot where you actually wanna start, you can press the letter Q to delete everything to the left of that, and then letter W will delete everything to the right. So Q will just bring us as the new star right In there. In this video, I want to review the Canon M6. And then another trick that I use is when you're editing during your timeline, you can hit the letter L on your keyboard once it's playing. So you go from here and it'll go to double speed and it keeps increasing the speed if you press L twice or three times. And it's a good way to just edit a lot faster. So you can really zoom through your editing um, just by doing that. So let's go back and see what we have here. So typically when I'm editing videos, I don't do a lot of color grading on the original, just the studio footage like that. I'll usually leave the settings, you know, whatever I set on the camera, I make sure that it looks pretty good and then it usually looks good in the post proc here. But what I might do some color grading on is if I have some B-roll I put in here, then the way you'd wanna do that is you click on the clip and you go up across the top, we have editing right there, we have color. So color is where you're gonna do your color grading. And so you highlight your clip and you can go down and change quite a bit about your clip. Um, there's also these little things right here. You'll see that these are actually a way that you can have um, like keyframes right there. So it says, do you wanna delete it? So yeah, well, delete that keyframe. So if I wanted this video to start off right here, and say I wanna zoom in, I can drop a keyframe by clicking the little stopwatch icon right there on scale, and then I'll you know hit the right arrow to go forward a few <laughs> frames, and then I can drop another keyframe right here by clicking a little dot, and at this keyframe, maybe I wanna be zoomed into like there, right? So what you can do then is it starts here, and it'll zoom in. So it's just a good way that if you're trying to, so let's get rid of that keyframe, we don't want that. But that's a good way that you can easily zoom and move things around when you're editing. Sometimes I find I need to do that if I'm like tracking an object, you'll drop a whole bunch of keyframes. And it's a good way, you know, if you're doing like typically B-roll. So I don't obviously use keyframes much in my standard studio stuff. Sometimes I'll just cut and zoom in because sometimes that makes it a little more interesting to zoom in a little bit whenever you're emphasizing something. Um, but continuing on with this edit. So the other thing I recommend is at the bottom, if you know there's a long, a long time of you talking and it was all pretty good, then I might look at the bottom until I see a little gap in the audio. So you see right there, there is a small gap. So I can go check that out and I can just go and, and really just focus on the parts that I know I need to cut. So right there was like a pretty long silence. So what I might do is hit the letter C right at the edge of the audio starting right there. So I think right there's a good spot, go back two frames. So then hold shift and click and that'll cut both, both the audio and the video like we talked about before. And then if I go back here, dial to also do. I can tell where I stop talking and then I'll hit the letter W and it'll cut out everything to the right of that. That's what we talked about. So Q is to the left, W is to the right and it kind of cuts and it's like a, a ripple delete really is what it is. So on the back you have a little manual focus. Um, and so the way I typically edit my personal flow is that I like to go in and edit all of the studio, just this first. So I wanna look at me talking and, and, and the audio with that, line that up, edit the whole thing through, and then I'll add B-roll later once the main track is already solidified and ready to go. Now, something else I like to do is if you hit the letter V, um, and let's just say I wanna change the audio of this one. So the first track, sometimes what I like to do is I'll go into audio, and if you hit the presets, there are some several, you know, several different presets you might wanna look into. Podcast voice can be good for some microphones. Other microphones like this lapel mic, I usually just go with a balanced male voice. And sometimes I like to get rid of dynamics. I think dynamics sounds a little bit weird when they add the extra clarity in there. Um, but overall, I would say that once you do that, it takes a few seconds to analyze it, but I think the audio then sounds a lot better. Now, if you want to use the same attributes from this audio clip on another one, what you wanna do is go over and right click on the audio, and I do the same thing with color grading. Um, a good way to do that is just to select a clip, go up there and say copy, and then go over to the next audio right here, this audio clip, right click and say paste attributes, and you'll see right there, it's going to copy like the volume, the loudness, um, and all the stuff that I did to the first clip. So now these two clips should be identical um, in how they're actually edited. And the same thing, again, you can do with the, uh, these clips up here, the actual video portion of it. If I color grade it, or if I add any kind of like resizing to this, I can copy it and I can paste it on another clip. And that's a great way to kind of make your editing quicker and more consistent so you don't have to go in and click on all the settings for each individual clip. So if you do it for one, you can also highlight like a dozen other clips and just paste it for all of those, paste the attributes and make sure that they are all the same. 
So other than that, I actually wanna go through the top and just show you guys a little bit about what I use each tab for. So starting with assembly, assembly is where I do most of my importing and I kind of drag the clips over. I think it's a good way to just simplify the window so you just have the clips right there, you have your bins right there, and then you have like your timeline right here. So really easy to drag things where they belong, really easy to organize the clips into their respective bins. And I do all of that from the little project thing right up at the top. You can also go across and there's a lot of other things that I don't really use that much. So you can go into like your media browser, um, you can see markers and stuff like that. But for my purposes, I just stay with the project tab within the assembly tab at first. Then most of my editing is actually done in editing, which makes sense. I can find the clips I want, drag them in as I need to, and then I can also add some different effects. So if I want to somehow like merge a song in here, so if I add music, I can go into effects here and I can go to like audio transitions there, crossfade, and I can have a constant gain at the beginning and at the end of a song. So if this right here was a song and I wanted to kind of fade in, I, what I would do is I would take constant gain and I would drag it over to the beginning of this clip. So you see right there, it plops in. It's kind of hard to see, so let's zoom in and see what that looks like. So as you zoom in, you'll start to see that there's a, a constant gain transition between these two clips. So let's make that a little bigger as well. And you'll see that what you can do then is you can click on it and you can expand it, you can shrink it. So like right there, you can expand or shrink the transition period. So you can make that even longer or shorter as you find necessary. And then if you decide you don't want it, you just click on it and you hit delete and that will get rid of it. So continuing across the top, like I said, colors where you do most of your color grading or anytime you wanna change basically just the color or the brightness or the white balance of any, any clip individually, that's where you do that. If you go into effects, that's where you can kind of manage. Like I said, if you resize things, you can do that from the editing tab. You can also do that from here. If you add, like if you wanna crop something or something like that, then typically what I'll do is from the editing tab, I'll go over to effects, click the little search bar and I'll type in crop. Um, so if I go to crop right there, then you click crop and you drag it onto the clip. So if I want to crop this clip right here, which again, I usually only do that for B-roll type stuff, you can go in and crop it. Or maybe if you're like trying to blur out another, if you're trying to blur out a frame, it's a good way to like make a blurry frame on top of a clear frame and then crop the blurry one. So it only blurs one specific area. That's the way I typically do it. There might be better ways to do that as well. Um, but that's just an easy way that I usually do that. And so then once you have that, you can go over to effects. You'll see the same kind of window here and effects can really control quite a bit. Of course, you have the basic color correction as well. And there's a little bit of redundancy between some different tabs, but it depends on what you're trying to do. It's kind of more convenient to have different combinations of tools on a single tab. So audio, like I said, is just basically all I do is I add the presets and I'll maybe change like the loudness of it, the clip volume, um, and I'll change the EQ of it. Other than that, I try to keep the audio as consistent as possible and, and just really change it as little as possible. I try to just keep all the echo out in the studio and just use a decent microphone and I don't need to make too many changes to the audio clip here. Then lastly, graphics. Graphics is a good way to, so if I just go in and I say I wanna add a title somewhere in here. So if I'm editing, um, let's hit the letter T on the keyboard and you'll see I'm in this little text tool right here. So if I click, I can type like whatever text I want. Um, so text, text right there. And then you can click on the little, little selection tool there and you can click and drag this around wherever you want. You can go on the right and you can change the color of it. You can change the size of it and a lot of different attributes with the font. And of course over here you can change the position and the scale of the text frame itself. Um, so this is a good way to have some different keyframes, make your text move in if it needs to, or like slide into wherever you want it to be on your frame. And so you'll see that on here, it also shows up in the next layer. So you can also move your text around throughout the different parts of your timeline. Now, the next thing I wanna show you guys, which is really helpful for me, are the Alt and the Control keys. So if you're trying to drag a clip, so if I have, like, if I wanna put a second one of this clip somewhere, so right here I have the word text, if I wanna put that over here, I can hold down the Alt key, and then click and drag this text over here, and it'll show up again over there. So now I have a duplicate of it, and it's going to be absolutely identical to what it is like over here. And then on the flip side, if I have another clip and I wanna add it in between the two, so if I wanna say, you know what, actually this little combination right there needs to be back here a little bit more, you can hold down control and then click and drag it. And what it does 
is it pastes it in there and it slides, it shifts everything to the right of that. So right there, you'll see it drops it in and the clip that used to be there is now over on the right of that clip. So let's undo that. You'll see that it was here. If you click it, hold control, drag it over, it shifts everything over to the right of where it belongs. So that's just a really convenient way to move things around. Again, when I'm editing, I do that quite a bit. But for the most part, I think that's most of the tools I use while I'm editing. I pretty much never go over to the libraries tab, but something I do recommend from graphics is sometimes going through browse. There are some pretty nice little free ones in here. Um, so there's different templates. If you have Adobe stock, free or premium, you can go through and see, again, quite a bit, uh, quite a few different uh, kind of lower thirds they have and just a lot of different stuff. So we'll go to free right here, see what they have. So they do have some big title things that pop up. They also have, uh, let's see if we keep going through. You'll see there's like little titles that slide across. They have little lower thirds. They have little action things to say like follow or subscribe or whatever you're trying to do. And so sometimes I'll just click and drag those in and I can change the text on them uh, and do everything as much as I need to. Now, again, if I wanna go back and edit this text and I'm in the graphics tab, I can very easily just click on this right here and then I can go up into the text and double click on it and I can change whatever I want about that text. And again, like I showed you before, the selection tool is a great way to click it and move it around wherever you want. So once I'm done with that, and I'm definitely not done with this video, but what I recommend doing is actually going to export, and I showed you export settings in another video, but I'll just summarize it really quickly here. The best way that I do it is Control M, and Control M should bring you up this window right here. Then you have settings on the right side. So H.264 is usually what I use for YouTube uh, and for my camera, just everything works out best that way. For presets, I go down to YouTube 4K Ultra HD because this camera is recording in 4K. Then I'll go down and I'll change the output name and the folder it's in. So I'll change the folder to whatever I'm using right now. Um, so whatever, we'll use this folder for now. And you can change the title of the file right there. So we'll say cancel and leave it with whatever it was. Then as you go down, you'll see that you have this little kind of sliding window right here. So I scroll down until you see VBR one pass, make that VBR two pass then go down and use maximum render quality and then click export and you are ready to go. That's pretty much everything I have to show you when you're editing a video. It should be enough to get you going. If you have other questions, of course, there's a lot more you can do with transitions and keyframes and moving things around. I recommend just kind of messing around with it a little bit and going to some different forums and learning more, so, you know, tailored to what specifically you are working on. But for the most part, if you're making videos similar to mine, that should be like the extent of the introductory information you need when you're editing with Adobe Premiere Pro. So I know this interface is very intimidating. I hope this guy, I hope this helped you to better understand what's going on here. I hope this helped you to also just have a better idea of how to be more efficient when you're editing and just a general flow of how to just really edit your videos and make things work as well as possible. So guys, as always, thank you all for watching. I'll see you next time.